say hi. <laughs> hey mommies, how are you? I guess that you're all preparing for um, this week's festivities and that everybody is busy with that. But I just wanted to um, just say hi. And I've been talking a lot um, this week about birth because I've been so surprised. I've been talking to a lot of moms um, since I've been working on the finishing touches for my new uh, Breastfeeding Secrets e-course. And I'm so surprised at how many moms don't actually know how like, um, you know, birth affects breastfeeding. And in particular about breath, because at birth, sorry, a lot of moms actually like, for example, they're like, oh, if I have a C-section, that it might be a little bit more difficult once the baby's born. Um, the may maybe get taken to like a, you know, a baby unit, and I have to be away from my baby. But they don't realize. I think there's an assumption that because you have a vaginal birth, then that um, you know breastfeeding is going to be fine. That it's not going to be affected, and that's not always the case. Because even if you have a vaginal birth, you may, for example, have um, IV fluids because you have an epidural. And especially in this country, in the U.S., um, things are a little bit different. You know, things are very, very routine in the hospital. It's kind of like um, sometimes I feel there's no, there's no kind of leeway. It all has to be done in a specific type of way. So the problem with that is that um, in regards to IV fluids, it's like a routine procedure. So you don't really get asked. I remember the first time when I had um, Samuel that um, I had an induction, so I had to have IV fluids. But I wasn't explained, first of all, the, you know, the, the challenges or the pro, pros and the cons about an induction. So I kind of just felt like it was like an easy ticket, like an easy way out to the pain. And that it was great because I was in control. I knew when I was going to get to the hospital. But I wasn't explained about all these challenges and all these problems that I would have after my baby was born, not just um, with the breastfeeding part, but the recover, like general recovery um, after birth. So we don't, we're not really explained a lot about that. And in regards specifically to the IV fluids, we're not explained a lot about that either because with Isaac, I wanted an epidural too. Um, I'm like really bad with pain. <laughs> so I wanted an epidural, but what I did was I waited till a lot later so that I didn't have to have those, those IV fluids right away. So it was less time with the IV fluids and less time obviously, um, you know, with all that extra liquid in my body. So once I had Isaac, it was really easy and really quick for me to get rid, rid of that water retention that I had. Where with Samuel, it lasted for days. I mean, it was almost like it was more than a week and I was still like so puffy and so, um, you know, just it was really, really difficult to get rid of that water retention. And of course, breastfeeding was super difficult because I was having lots of latching issues and those latching issues also meant that I was having like cracked nipples, sore nipples, so many other things that went along with that. So I've been trying to like give moms a lot more information about um, IV fluids and about, you know, different types of birth because the, like I said before, and I just want to stress that point, just because you have a vaginal birth doesn't mean that things are going to be smooth sailing after you have, you know, your baby. If you had IV fluids, if you had an epidural, and it depends when you had those IV fluids too, how much water retention you'll have. And something also that is that kind of like right there in the back, you don't even think about that, and that we don't talk about that either, is the birth weight of your baby. My two birth weights of my babies were completely different. And it was because of that too. The baby, um, Isaac didn't have as much water retention in his system than Samuel did. So he was born puffy also, where Isaac was born really lean and um, his birth weight was just very normal. And we don't think about that. And then what happens with that is that obviously there's a dramatic um, decrease in the weight loss within a few, you know, within 24 hours. Um, your puffy baby obviously is not weighing as much now and then it's like alarm bells for the doctors and they're like, oh my God, no, your baby needs to, you know, he can't lose that much weight. Um, we're going to have to supplement. We need him to eat more. We need him to get w gain weight to have more poopy diapers, more wet diapers. And then you're kind of like on stress mode, like, oh my God, what happened? What's wrong with my baby? And nothing happened. It was just the fact that you had a lot of IV fluids and that water retention you know, goes into your baby too. If you think, especially with an induction, you can be, from the moment you get to the hospital to when you give birth, we're talking like 14, 15, 16 hours plus, and all that time you have IV fluids. 
So it would be so much better if you could just like, you know, get to the hospital and, um, and you can understand why there's precautions too. They have certain things about um, that you can aspirate your, your fluid, your stomach fluid in, in the case maybe that you have to go into a C-section and then that's kind of, um, you know, risky, but it's not like a huge risk. It's just that I feel like our doctors and our hospitals are like just trying to minimize risk that are, that are small to like zero because of lawsuits and because of so many things. So um, it's just something that I wanted to bring to you so that you could discuss with your, your OBGYN, if you have a doula, a midwife, whoever, you know, discuss this so that you're better informed so that when you're making those decisions, you make them, you know, you're, you're conscious of what you're doing, not just having routine stuff done, done to you at the hospital. I, I was, I, I get so disappointed after you, you know, um, this is my second baby. I really want to have another baby too, but I, I feel like every time I'm getting more wise into things. Like I remember with um, Isaac too, when I got the hospital bill, it was just a hospital bill. I was like, no, give it to me specific. And then I was reading all this stuff. I was like, I didn't ask for that. That wasn't necessary. What's that? You know, and it's because of all this routine stuff. So get familiar with all this stuff. Um, before you give birth if you can have a tour of the hospital I had one but I didn't ask any questions so ask questions you know why am I getting the IV fluids don't be afraid to question the nurses you know um, my husband's like that he's super like ask questions like okay why is this explain it to me no don't explain it to me in the medical jargon you know explain it to me so I can understand and then you're like oh okay and then okay so yeah we don't want that do this other thing so ask questions don't be afraid because all the things that happen, you know, birthing is a miracle and there's so many things that go into it that, you know, even just the smallest thing can affect, you know, something like breastfeeding and um, it can be really def detrimental to your breastfeeding journey and the start of your breastfeeding journey is so important to help you establish your milk supply and help you, you know, along with your success that you're going to have later on. So just wanted to bring that with um, to you moms. I'm going to be posting lots of stuff about that so you get better informed too because I was really shocked um, this last few weeks that I've been talking to moms and um, I've just seen the lack of knowledge and the lack of awareness about something as simple as that as an IV fluid that you think is just a regular thing. You know, I'm just going to keep hydrated um, while I'm giving birth and that's it, you know, but there's consequences that come with that too. Um, you know, we, we stress more about other things that maybe are not that important, but things like that are important because they have consequences later on, not just for you, but also for your baby too and your recovery. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. So just wanted to bring that to you, mommies. Bye.